What's cracking? It's your favorite day of the week. And that's because we got the hottest set of twins. Queen Reese and Sway Swiss always giving you that motivation and that inspiration. So congratulations on tapping in with the twins. It's time to tap in. It's time to tap in. It's time to tap in. Tapping with the twins right now. Yes, sir. Tapping with the twins. Yes, yes, tap in with the Twins Podcast, episode five. We on episode yeah, five, Twins. Episode five. Listen, wow. we just had a birthday, okay? We, Thanksgiving just passed, too. Yes. We just had a birthday. We're not going to tell y'all how old we are, um, but we're pretty pretty, pretty young. young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Twin, how was your birthday? Y'all know, Man. actually, listen. We have not saw each other since our birthday. Right. Since Thanksgiving. The right. day before Thanksgiving, Twin went out of town for Thanksgiving, and we are just now seeing each other you went since right our after. birthday. Right. So, happy so, birthday. I know. Happy birthday you were to you, younger twin. last I saw I you. Oh, You know what? You still look good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm tired. <laughs> look, I just got off the plane, too. Uh, but, yes, happy birthday to you, twin. It was different. We always feel so bad when we're not together yeah. um, celebrating our birthday, but... Again, just happy birthday to you. Just want to tell you that I'm proud of you. I'm blessed to just have another year with you. Like, Aww. having a twin is just so unique and so dope. You know what I mean? It we got to share everything. It's it's funny because people always feel the pressure of, like, doing for both of us. Like, mm-hmm. if somebody buys me a gift, they feel like they have to buy a twin a <laughs> gift. It's so cute. But um, it is. it's just I wouldn't have it no other way, like, to be able to just keep spending these years with my twin, my best Aww. friend, my roommate. You know what I mean? It's just always so cool. So just want to tell you happy birthday. Well, thank again. you. Absolutely. Well, happy birthday to you as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you all like, we su- I'm like that. <laughs> all cheesy. Like, happy hey, birthday. You. Where's my surprise? <laughs> it's in the car. It's in the car. It's a car? <laughs> oh, it's in the car. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but for real, without copying everything you just said, <laughs> because I'm extraordinary, pro- ex- extremely extraordinary, <laughs> extremely. <laughs> proud of you um and all your accomplishments you definitely always keep me on my feet and keep me motivated and i know sometimes i can't keep up but i'll be trying mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but no, i appreciate you, you always still rooting for me regardless yeah, and um always having my back like through everything like whether it's ready to kill or chill you know kill what I'm or chill. You, be, you be with the shits right <laughs> whatever you are and seriously know. like you said it's just it's dope and it's an honor just even being your twin i really say that all the time i couldn't imagine life without you it would be so crazy so i'm Facts. so thankful I don't know how people do it I know. without a twin. Right. We're super blessed. We are super um, blessed, for real. And shout yes. out to mom for just making sure we had that bond. And, yes. you know. and next year, look, we got to really do something together. I yeah. know we kind of, we, we spend a little time together each birthday, um, but we never really plan something that, together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. We got to do that. I don't think we did. I know last time, a few years back, you had like Sway's B-Day Extravaganza or yeah. something. We, we tried to make it your birthday. It was still, right. That was weird. I but, felt um, so bad, like, no, put streets on the flyer. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then before then, back home in Lansing, I know years back, probably like when we first moved here, we did a little something. We did. We back it there. was like I'm going away slash, nope, that what wasn't was it. That? No. We went but yeah, back we definitely got to um, do that. Exactly. You know, and we still got to turn up later today. Actually, if you ain't doing nothing, come through it because oh, I'm about to get back on my my healthy, no drinking, eating healthy, Starting trying to, you know, come into the new year. Okay. With a more I'm, clear I'm mind and, uh, you know, just relax. So. Yeah, that's that's right. It is fourth quarter, so it's time to really get everybody get their mind fourth right and quarter. focus and prepare for 2021. As we know, 2020 has been one hell of a year. <laughs> definitely going down in history. This year will definitely be in the history books. You hear me? Yes. Like, we are going to always talk about this year. Yes. Tell you know, but if you kids, played it right, it, you know, even though it was a lot of bumps, it, it was it still was a such a dope, powerful year for so many people. Yeah. Like so many people, really their elevated. businesses grew. You know what I mean? They got more opportunities and stuff like that. So shout out yeah. to the people that took advantage of of this year right. and um, you know was able to still excel even through right. through the rough times. But tell me, I know you went back home, twin. I have not been home. <laughs> um, it's, it's strange because twin actually goes home more than I do because I feel like I don't. They love me. Not just like, no, first of all, they I'm gonna say I don't have no friends. No, they love they I, they love you more than me to be for real honest. Like I just go. But they there don't more talk so. to me. No, they, y'all they, can talk to me. They be scared. Listen, like, listen. Do, do I got to schedule a consultation? <laughs> <laughs> do I got to schedule no. a time to just say hi? <laughs> they hate. Yeah. So I did go back That's home funny. to Lansing, Michigan. If you have not watched our first couple episodes, know a little bit more about us. That is where we are from, Lansing, Michigan. Yes, yeah, we moved to town. Atlanta about um ten years, ten two thousand and eight. 11, 12, 12 years. years ago. Yeah. A little minute ago. Right. 
Um, so yeah, I do go back home often. That's where my bestest friends are. Um, Kaisha and Ebony. I have a few friends, but my bestest they are in Michigan. So I do go there often. And we still got family there. Our dad's side of the family, and my son, his dad is there, and his family. So I do go often. So yes, I decided to go for my birthday once I realized Sway booked the trip. I'm sorry, <laughs> Sway's fiance. Thank you, Sway's she fiance booked the trip for them to Miami. <laughs> And, of course, I could have went, but I didn't want to be a third wheel. And, unfortunately, I am not dating anyone, so um, I wasn't able to go. So, you know, they were going to Miami, so I figured, well, why not go to Michigan? Since Especially since I didn't have to pay for the expenses, I figured I'd go, <laughs> go to Michigan. Who paid for it? Who paid <laughs> and, um, for it? It was, a, it was gifted to me. Oh, okay. You got uh, flewed out. I got flewed out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. Flewed out to do nothing. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so I was like, well, let me go back home, kick it with my friends, at least to, instead of, even though I would have had a ball here with my mom and my son, but I thought I'd just go up there, even though it was cold, and they actually closed in Michigan, so it was very limited. Mm. Um, so, uh, honestly, I didn't really do much. Now, I got to hang with my ace, Ebony, and, and kick it with her and see my family, which is important, so that's the most important part. I was able to do that, but literally on my birthday, I didn't even get to watch the fight, because it was the Roy, Roy Jones and Girl. Mike Tyson, I was going to say Mike Jackson. <laughs> um <laughs> I didn't even get to watch the fight because I was trying to figure out where to have people pull up again. It was everything was closed and um, didn't want to get nobody fined having them at places that we, you know, we weren't supposed to really be out. So I just really couldn't pull it off. And again, I didn't even get to see the fight, um, which is crazy. Got my makeup done and everything it was so cute to literally do nothing. So that's how my birthday went. Mm. But I'm just blessed to make it another year. I'm thankful despite mm. the fact that I wasn't on a beach turned up in Miami. But um, mm. it <laughs> seems like you needed me out there in Michigan to provide a little structure <laughs> and organization and plan some stuff out and be proactive <laughs> and pre-plan. Yeah. Nah. No, it was it was totally last minute. And shout out to my ace for even thinking of trying to pull something together for me last minute like that. I know if we had time, she would have made it. Shout out to Ebony. Yeah, she would have definitely made you know. Got so you ain't do nothing. I chill. I chill you was with just my sitting there, and cute, and beat yep, for the dogs. Had, had a, yep, buzzing. Buzz and yep, end up back at her house, end up eating some burritos. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, that actually was hey. probably the first birthday. I just no, I ain't gonna say the first birthday because I don't really never really do much. You we know, don't. I might just both don't. You know, Atlanta's a little different, a little more scenic, I guess. So even just getting out and riding around through Atlanta just feels a little better, I guess, mm -hmm. versus um being back home. Unfortunately, it's not like the city lights and all that. Um. But, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, I'm, I wouldn't have done much different here, but at least maybe been able to go to a bar and just hear some right. music, which would have been nice. But So you saw mom good. and grandma? You saw yep, Brandy, I saw, her sister? Yep, our sisters. Cool. Our sisters, Brandy, even saw Sharika, my grandma, dad, my auntie. Uh, the grandma them let you in the house? Or you they did. Oh, they, okay. they was like, I see you got your mask on. Um, being safe, nobody else had a mask on. Oh, <laughs> really? I'm surprised. Right, I, I don't think they're going to let you in the house. Yeah, I was being extra cautious with everybody because my thing is, despite what I think, I try to follow everybody's rules. I know Sharika sprayed me down. <laughs> like, literally sprayed everybody, <laughs> came through the door like this, the memes and shit. Temperature check, too, or yeah. no? Yeah. <laughs> no, right. Um, but, you know, hey, I'm not against nobody and right. what they want. You know, I, that's why I was keeping my mask with me just to be prepared in case, you know. But, no, um... Grandma and and everybody was doing cool, cool. chilling. And, I know, remember she said Brandy was going to peek her head in, right. so I thought you was going to peek your head That's in. That's cool, though. Right. You have to hug them and everything, too? Yep, yep. I actually sat there with That's them. We only up. got about 15, 20 minutes because it was on my way out. But um, I definitely told them that we're going to send for them. I know no, we keep saying it, but I'm like, Grandma Deanna, we're going to have y'all come mm -hmm. to Atlanta. So hopefully we get them here soon. Cool. So did it snow? So it did not snow. Okay. It didn't rain. The That's weather good. actually wasn't bad. Really? You know, I didn't, um, it really wasn't bad. I, it, it really wasn't bad. It wasn't like that cold, cold, like that, Got you. you know, I had to zip up my jacket and, you know, could still be cute. And I see you came back with your little fur, whatever. You, you, you found a little head sugar daddy Oh, you know, okay. My, yeah, you know, Ebony. Your sugar mama. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ebony. <laughs> my boss okay. friend. Came she, back um, looking rich. Yeah, she, she got me all. She got me all the way together. So shout you went up to Michigan, got you some unemployment little PPP <laughs> loan real quick. <laughs> no. Listen, I ain't mad at that. Listen, no. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, I definitely no, went and did so some dope. some shopping for sure. Every time I go up there, I go to her boutique. And what's the name of her boutique again? Head over heels. Head over heels in Lansing, Michigan. Yes, check that I'm out. So she got thankful. some nice exclusive stuff. Yes, out there in the capital city. Yes, shout out to Ebony. She been twin friend, best friend for. A long Years. time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. So, yep. shout out to Ebony. Cool. That's what's so, up, yeah. twin. I definitely can't wait together. to go back to Lansing and 
see the family and see your friends. Right. <laughs> now, it's funny. When we go back, and I'm not being funny, it's, it's just that twin really <laughs> is more connected. You know what I mean? Like, when we go there, I really will not go back home without twin because I literally will, don't know what I would do. I would go to dad's house, I guess, or grandma's house. But twin is the one like, just come, just come, and just sit with me. And I just roll with twin, and we stop at everybody's house and we'll take her on a tour. Twin is the boss. That's the queen of Lansing right there. So... <laughs> That's the big dog. Really they love seeing the home. twins together, though. Everybody hates when it's just one of us. They love to see us together. So we and we got to go back. Show. You remember that uh, a couple years ago we did Peace in the Park? Yeah. And we had got all those convenience stores, and they all um, pitched in, yeah. and we had just meat and juice and stuff. Yeah. We got to do something like that again. Yeah, just start, start something some like type of annual or something. Exactly. So we for the home tried time. a couple different things, but yeah, definitely sure. want to start giving back a little bit more now that we are in a position. So right. For sure, yes. that's so what's how up. How was your birthday? Well, I mean, I saw a little little bit of glitz and glam and feet rubs and and uh, <laughs> swims in the ocean. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I just got off the plane about five seconds ago. Literally, Delta dropped me off right here. Um, literally, I was home for like ten minutes, y'all, and I shot over here. Um, so, but it was cool though. That work so, ethic, y'all see that? No listen, excuses. Pushing through. I'm and I've been here since yesterday, and I was about ready to reschedule. Listen, but. We're Listen, go great point. <laughs> like, I'm literally over here like. <laughs> and we still end up waiting podcast. on me. Oh, wait. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what the hell are we, what are we talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, so, went to Miami um, the day after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was cool. It was so different without you being there, Twin. It just, it just was different. It, it was, was different like everybody was you. sad and nobody know what to do. No. And there was nobody to argue with. You know what I realized? No. That. We're the clowns of the family. I think we've been through that. But it's like, you know, it's it's both of us have to be there. It takes both no, of for us. Real. Because I was like, damn, you know what? Most holidays, all we do is sit and talk shit all yep. day and crack jokes on mom and everybody else. So without you no, being seriously. there, it was like, I was twiddling my fingers. Like, um, it totally was different. You know, nobody, twin laughs at every joke. You know, nobody was there to laugh at me. <laughs> I'm <just> like, <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> It was different though, but it was cool. The food was busting. Shelly did her thing That's on the turkey. Up. But yeah, so my yeah, fiance well, took me to. Uh huh. No, I was gonna say I know it was well deserved, but it was. It was. Um, my fiance took me to Miami, so we went to Miami. Um, it was cool. I love. I love Miami. Miami is always good vibes. You know, being by the water, and um, just the palm trees. Right. You know, the scenery oh. and everything like that. Energy. So it was cool. So she surprised me with a yacht. She got me a yacht on uh, what was that Saturday, and we went out. From like four thirty to like seven thirty, so we got got to watch the sunset, mm. and it was so beautiful. I like bet. the lights I've being downtown, seen. we rode past all the celebrities' house, Diddy's crib, and it was just really motivational. And that's one thing I like about Miami. Every time I go to Miami, I come back just ready to conquer the world. Like I'm just ready, <laughs> ready for some buy new some, shit. not some land, some water. Listen, huh? listen, I want to <laughs> buy that whole land of water, right? Um, but I always just come back super motivated. And, you know, I love Atlanta, but Miami is just different. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just always get so motivated. I don't know if it's just the lifestyle, um, the water, the lights. But it was such a cool experience. You know, I've been on the water before in Miami, but it was in the daytime. But I've never been there at night. And just to go through downtown. Um, that was cool. Went by the arena and everything like that. So it was really cool, cool. just vibing out. Me and her, we had food catered. We got to do our thing, drink, um, sit in the front of the yard and everything. So, And the weather was obviously nice. It was perfect. Me. It was perfect. Yep. And then that Sunday, of course, so. we just um, beach bums all day. Um, you know, she got me a couple of gifts and treated me like a boss, like she always does. So yeah, it was definitely so. cool. It was Shout definitely needed. Um, I was kind of hesitant to go out. I said I wasn't going to travel until I signed my lease on my third location, which I haven't done yet, but I'm still praying that we do that soon. But yeah. it definitely was needed, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, just to go – rejuvenate just to, um you know regroup come back and 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 take off again you know sometimes right. you gotta have that balance you have to take a break sometimes as workers hard, hard workers we don't never want to take a break because we feel like every day is counts which it does but you know you can take some days off because you need to just take a break so that you can come back stronger clear your mind right you know and be more productive so exactly. um it was it was it was really 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 fun Really, really fun. Good. Glad to hear that. I definitely yeah. was watching from afar. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So, Twin, let me ask you something. If you had one wish for your birthday, like even if it's something that you think may never, ever happen, I'm just curious to know what it would be. It does not matter what it is. It could be the biggest, the smallest, just one big wish that just would make you just like, God damn it, this is just like the best birthday ever. Um, dang, Ali, I wasn't really prepared for that question. You said dangling. 
<laughs> what you say? <laughs> Dangling. Girl, you was something else. Girl, that come a dime a dozen. <laughs> Nobody want that mess. Oh, I thought you said that. Then it come with number problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I feel like my answer is a little odd. It's not like a nope. gift necessarily. Um, but I think I would just feel great um, just internally and just overall and accomplished if I felt like everything was where I wanted it to be. So as far as like my businesses, um, being where I want them to be and having purchased my home. So I don't know if that was, you know, a cliche answer, but I just feel like that would, if I had accomplished that this past birthday, I wouldn't have cared if I was sitting in a square cell. I just would have felt so good and so like just accomplished and pro- just just I just would have felt so good that I think that would have been bigger than any like any gift, honestly. Now, so waking know. up on your birthday in your dream home and with your business being successful, right? What you consider successful, right, is your dream birthday. That, yeah. that day that'll make you just honestly. be like, listen, this is the best birthday right. ever. So that's that's course, next year then. Yeah, yeah. So you just was shy be, this year, but that's next year. Your yeah, dream that's, birthday that's is next be, year. Then. It is. It is. <laughs> like, and of course, you know, I could always name some other stuff. You know, a little. Little portion or you know stuff like that ain't never hurt Porsche? nobody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know they ain't never hurt nobody. There she go. That's but. what we getting at. <laughs> Tell the truth now. That's what you really want. No, <laughs> no. Um, and then honestly, I, I think my second one would be not that you asked. Okay. Um, just to be treated like I've never felt like I've you know mm. I've been you've treated me <laughs> like my um, mom. I'm the daddy. <laughs> I'm the daddy. <laughs> Mom has, Ebony has looked out for me a couple of times, so I don't want to down um, play the stuff y'all have done for me. But as far as, like, honestly, maybe, you know, somebody I'm in love with, honestly. Yeah, I you know, feel I just you. really treat me, just making making a day so special for me. Like, I, I never just woke you. up and feel like it's my birthday and just felt good and felt special and felt treated and catered to. I've never had that. So oh, that, man. honestly, Damn is it. almost just as equal as, you know, of course I want the success and all that, but that would have just been so awesome. That will be so awesome for me if I ever get that you one will, day. You will, Reese. You will, Reese. You will. Relax. Oh, relax. Fuck niggas. Relax. I. <laughs> you will, Reese, for real. It made me sad. I almost <laughs> want to go, like, hold somebody <laughs> hostage. Like, go date my sister and be a good man. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, it's like no feeling other, no feeling better. It's other feelings, but it's like such a good feeling when you do have someone that loves you, right? And, and somebody it. loves you back. Hey, that's the jam right there. <laughs> um, but stupid. for real, and they yeah. treat you. That's the right. thing. You know what I mean? And it's like it doesn't even mean you have to be the richest person or nothing like that. Some, sometimes it just right. requires a little thought. Right? You know what I mean, just be a little so thoughtful. True. Pay attention to your partner. Cause let me be no no nope, no my got, bad nope. I'm, I'm gonna work on Go at, at this new age uh-uh. cutting you off I'm gonna work on cutting you off you are gonna have to cut me off so you okay know what I mean. <laughs> say less but like I'm glad you said that it's, I'm not even saying somebody gotta take me on this million dollar trip right. or you know it could have been as simple as some little note cards on the damn mirror and a damn picnic in the back painting drink eating subway you know what I'm saying like it just would have been a thought of somebody just even thinking of something just different unique let alone you know a trip and all that stuff but just somebody you know, just really catering to me. And I feel like I've always done that in my past relationships, always excited about doing something for somebody for their birthday and catering to them. And I always end up single on my birthday. It's funny. But um, it's not funny. I've never... <laughs> it's not funny because I it's know hilarious. you like it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like I said, just... Even, yeah, whatever it is. But I definitely do want to be clear. I wasn't saying, like, they got to blow a bag on me, you know. And that's the thing, though, y'all. Like, sometimes we, we got to stop. If you're really with somebody that really loves you for you and not what you can do for them, all it takes is just little stuff, but just be thoughtful. If you right. hear them repeatedly speak on something that they want and, you know, it's only, like, 20 bucks or they want to just go to a park and have a picnic, like, People still, especially women, they still want a, a walk in the park. Like, right. my fiancé still be like, yes. let's go walk in the park. I be like, damn, really? Like, my fiancé is just the best. Like, yeah. we can just walk I'm and have she's to happy. Her. Yeah, you can borrow for a minute. <laughs> but for real, it's just it's just paying attention to your partner and right. and not trying to compare it to what anybody else is doing. You right. know what I mean? It's not about it being materialistic or the most expensive gift. It's just about you paying attention to what they may want or need or things they have spoken of. It may be a book. It may be just like a sudden experience that just really doesn't cost that much much if you plan it out, you know what I mean, and just pay attention. So that's the thing. Like, y'all be looking at all these extravagant birthdays, and they be spending thousands of dollars on these parties and mm-hmm. gifting cars and shit like that. Okay, when your time come, you'll do that. But in the meantime, you still need to be creative, be thoughtful. I tell people all the time, I feel like I damn near say this on every episode, Google. I always Google shit. I be like, mm-hmm. look, romantic shit to do yeah. in Atlanta, like in no, during Christmas or, you know what I mean, get specific, but they give you ideas. So it's mm-hmm. like, 
it's no excuse nowadays. You know what I mean? But and and women need to cater to the man too. You know what I mean? I, I know women. We always sit around waiting for the man to to do stuff for us for birthdays and shit like that. But your man want to feel good too. You know what I mean? A lot of times he just want a, a PS Five or a gift card to a restaurant or just don't laugh a PS Five. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, but just still be thoughtful right. for them too. And this is another thing. Don't gift or do for people what you think they want or what you would want. You right. know what I mean? It's about what they want, regardless of how far fetched it is or how awkward or weird it is. Right. It's about what they want. I think sometimes I know I was speaking to a, a girl and she was saying how her man keep giving her roses. And she was like, I mean, okay, like I don't really care. Like, they cool and all, but it's not what I want. You know, I keep telling him I don't really want roses, but he keeps, you know thinking because he's he's buying them for me that it's okay and you know what I mean like you have to pay attention you know what I mean so yeah roses is cliche and to some people it means the world but some women want something else they might just want to go to a restaurant they might want to go to a movie they might want you to just grab a blanket and pack some sandwiches and sit at the fucking right. park and eat you feel yes. me so but twin you're going to get that and I think really <laughs> what it is is you just really focusing on you for these next couple of months and you're going to just put yourself on a whole nother level of men yeah. to where you're going to find that man that's really going to treat you like the yeah. queen that you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just, right. you know, <laughs> it's hard for me to say much when I be all in love and shit like that <laughs> and, and it does feel good. You know what I mean? It really, really does but you want it to be with the right person exactly. and at the right time. Right. You feel me? And you don't want it to be fake and be capping for the internet. Right. Um, but your time is definitely going to come. I'm trying to tell right. you, keep focusing because your next birthday is going to be your dream birthday. You're going to be in your dream house. Your business is going to be where you want it to be. And then you're going to find the demand that that's right for you. Yeah. You feel me? So you went through. I, you, I, you've learned from every lesson. Exactly. Every failure. Every you know broken relationship. And that's all that matters. So. Right. It's actually been a little interesting journey that I look forward to sharing with y'all one day as far as just my um, Ooh, that journey right my there. movie of a relationship life. Yeah, that's a movie. <laughs> that's going to have to be a whole movie. <laughs> yeah, that's so once I get production and and cast some people. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, but I take my blame too, you know, because um, you know, it's just growth that was needed with me, you know, even realizing dealing with the, allowing the type of men that I would allow in, and realizing the weaknesses within me. So, you know, it is what it is. I've learned from it, like she said. I've grown. I know my days are coming, so I'm looking forward to it. And like you said, focused on me, and um, I know it'll all come together. So I can't wait to hear what oh, your what, answer what? is. Oh, for my <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. Nah. So my dream birthday, believe it or not, honestly, <laughs> like if I could have it my way, really, I would wake up. I can. I'm just throwing this part in there. Have a little mimosa, you know what I mean? Your little breakfast. Okay, keep um, it real. But you know what it is, honestly, what would make what would make me so happy that, to the point where I think I would cry tears of joy, if is if I could be like the lead of a choir, like a gospel choir, for real. Like, for, I love gospel music, y'all. It's just something about it. It makes me feel really, really good. And I just feel so motivated, just positive. So you're talking God, about actually, like? Yes. Yes. Okay. When I go up there, you know what I mean? And just singing, he's able. You know what I mean? Ooh, just singing okay. with the choir. I really want to just, woo! I want to let it all out and just dance and just. We going to make that happen. I want to let it all out. You know what I mean? But that would just be my dream, just to, just to feel that energy from the choir. You know what I mean? Like, I've always mm -hmm. dreamt of that, believe it or not. Like, damn it, if I could have it my way. So one day I'm going to rent a choir. Right. You know, anybody or, not know anybody that got a choir that she can lead? Yeah, just for like, just Let for like 30 minutes. Really, I just like two songs. Mm -hmm. So if I can rent a choir for like 10 minutes and they just sing the songs with me and make me, act, you know, feel like I'm directing them. That'd be my dream right there. For I'll be on a whole nother high. You hear me? Oh, like high off man, we gonna make that. Y'all help talk. me make Real that talk. happen. My sister always <laughs> surprising me. Y'all help me make this happen. So get with me. <laughs> DM me. My social media is Queen Reese two underscores. DM me. Let me know how we can make this happen, y'all. Please, I will pay. That's some real stuff. I'm dead serious. Though. I'm dead. Serious. Like I, was, no, I would love to I see that. I think I would just probably pass out. So happy, like no, <gasps> no, this is unbelievable. No. <laughs> Like, for real, though. But I love, oh, and it's man. like, so let me tell y'all, you know, a little bit about me and just me even just that being my dream, me being able to say that today, right? Because it was a point in time where church music just did something to me. Like, I literally would would run from that shit. Like, anytime I heard it, I would just cut it off. I would literally be like, and plug my ears because it just always made me feel so guilty like I was sinning, like mm. I was bad. I just felt like, you know, they were always talking to me. I just always felt bad for being who I was when I would hear gospel music. I'm talking about it was bad. And we had aunts and stuff that was really in the church, and sometimes they would play music, and I would just cringe. Mm. Like, 
You know what I mean? Because I just, oh, I just remember the feeling. So to be able to say now at, I was about to say my age, at this age, that um, I'm not ashamed. We 36, y'all. Hello, and we own it. We 36. We it. It is but at it 36, is. to be able to say now that that's a dream of mine to actually have a choir behind me, now I actually can listen to choir music and it makes me feel good. So it's like the complete opposite now. That's you know what dope. I mean? And back in the day, like, it just used to eat at me so much. I hated church because I felt like when I walked in there, they just... Bring your gay ass right on up here. That's how I feel as soon as I walk in. What your ass doing? You over there. Got... I'm like, God damn. I used to just feel so bad. Like, that the pastor is talking to me. Like, you know what I mean? And I was like, I don't got time yeah. to be feeling that. So I would really try to avoid it. You know what I mean? And it's just, I'm just, it's just so cool to see the tables turn. And, you know, it just gives me such a good feeling now. Like I said, I listen to choir, church music pretty much almost every day to start my day just to get me going. Um, nice. And back in the day, you know, it just being gay was like the absolute worst thing right. back in the day. Like it was a point in time where I was literally living like two different like lives. Whole double like, life. You know what I mean? Like I would, I would leave Lansing. Detroit was like an hour away, so I would leave Lansing, and I would pack a bag. And I'm talking about as soon as I cross that, welcome to Detroit sign. Pull over right here at this gas station. Switch clothes. Put on my little town boy clothes and roam the streets of Detroit. You hear oh. me? Then it was time to go back to Lansing. Pull over at this uh, gas station right here before we cross over to Lansing. I'll switch, put on my little grandma clothes, whatever, and come back to Lansing. I really was doing that like often, almost every weekend. I played for a mm. basketball team out there. So I was really like just change. It was like I was living two different lives. You know yeah, what I, mean? I remember just you even, even the way you dressed was different, which I think <laughs> was part of you trying to find yourself too. Because you right. was just, you wore like a little baggy or stuff. And just, I mean, I know all of our ways of, of dressing has changed over the right. years. Um, so yeah, maybe that's not accurate to say because at the end of the day, I guess you felt that was you at that moment. Because I was finna say, I just love now how you really embrace who you are and all that. I, don't really, I know you're getting to that, but I was just thinking back to to your whole style of clothing was even different. The few times I did catch a slipping. Now, which one you... T- oh, okay. I'm about to say no, the, the, of, the clothing, other. Because I just said we had two oh, no. styles of clothing the de- going on. The D-boy. D- the D-boy. The D-boy. Okay. D- okay. D- <laughs> okay. Because in Lansing... So I was it little... that anybody made you feel a particular way or you just naturally felt like society and period already so let me not even just bring it around? You know, like... Is there anybody, us or anybody in the family I that made you like... feel like you couldn't come around dressed like how you would dress in Detroit? Yeah. I'm not going to put no names out there, auntie. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, which no. auntie? <laughs> no. What was that line? It was a line from Love and Basketball where the mom was like, she said something like, are you gay or something? She asked her about her being a lesbian or something. Mm. And I remember when our aunties would always say that to me and it would get under my skin. But anyway, really? I think it was because in Lansing, I don't really know anybody that was gay in Lansing. I guess everybody was in the closet. Um, but I didn't really know anybody and in Detroit. It was like it was a lot more gay city. You yeah, hear me? So that's um, true. That's very true. I think that's what it is. I felt like so much of an outsider in Lansing, mm-hmm. so I just kind of kept it under wraps. Okay, I was I still trying to figure out who I was. Um, so you know, I don't know. I had to experience it to make sure it was who I was. You know what I mean? Just like I had to experience um, boyfriends and stuff like that, just to make sure, like. Damn, society is pressuring me to, you know, to be with a man, but I really don't know if this is what I want to do, but let me just try it and make mm-hmm. sure. And I'm really proud that I'm, I am I did try it. I ain't right. going to lie. Because some people haven't. And don't. Some some women haven't. And I feel like you can't tell me you not, you know, it doesn't cross your mind. Like, we're all curious. So I right. know it might be crossing your mind, like, just the experience right. with the boy. You know what I mean? I, I You know, I could be wrong. Um, but I'm just glad that I was able to experience it so that I can know completely it was not what I wanted to do. Absolutely, <laughs> hands down. Matter of fact, I gave myself, like, reassurance twice. <laughs> like, okay, one more okay. This after this, after this, Ain't this the- it. <laughs> like, I'm not playing. I don't like it. And I did not <laughs> like it. It was just because so, it was the beginning phase. And I'm just like, <laughs> no. I'm, no, no, I'm what just, you mean? I'm just, oh, you know, look, the, first, make- the first couple of. Look, stop. The you first sound couple like the of sessions now. is you had got to get a good bad. dude. No. You just got to get you got the wrong dude. You sound like him right now. They still tell me I got the wrong dude. You just ain't, I just you, you like girls because you ain't tried the right dude yet. <laughs> I guess the right dude up in heaven somewhere. I don't know. Cause. No, I know it's deeper than that. I was being funny, just <laughs> no, saying no. like you know everybody's first few times. I'm sure are probably not the best, but I'm, I know well, that that's it was why I did a second and third. I know that's why I did a second. So and you third. was out, y'all. I was I, I was a hoe for about twelve hours. <laughs> About twelve hours, I was a little hoe. See, we all got a pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just that whole, um, you know, going back and forth from Lansing to Detroit and kind of hiding it from um, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Real talk. You know what I mean? And um, so wait, so when you did experience it those two times, 
What? what are, go ahead. What are you asking me? Why are we still there? I was about to use the, the P word. <laughs> Speechless, guys. Penetrated. I don't know what's coming. Uh, <gasps> what? <laughs> Cut P. What the <laughs> No, I'm just curious, though, like, you know. You you can't even ask me. You uncomfortable. I know. You uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) But how did you feel afterwards? You know, like, did you feel disgusted? Mm -hmm. Was it just more so like a, okay, this really isn't for me? Or you just. I'm in the bind, Nate. That's how I felt. That's how I felt. No, I said it all. <laughs> like the girl said it all. No, I said it all. was banging her. I'm in the bind, Nate. So you, uh. That's how I felt. Like I was trying to get my little brother to go to college. I oh, no. No, nah, all just aside, <laughs> I really did feel very similar. <laughs> Damn, at least she got very some money. <laughs> I remember in the beginning thinking, okay, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Um, he looks kind of cool. I don't know. They say this is cool. Let's see. I don't know. The feeling of like, you know, when you're getting aroused, like, okay, I don't know. Maybe I might like him. I don't know. But no, when it actually happened, I really did not like it. Like, I, I did not like it. Like, and I'm not just saying that to Kat because let me tell you one thing I say. If I ever did want to be with a man, I would go be with a man. Like, I know that, like, the gay community makes it hard for you to be with a woman and then go back to be with a man, they judge you and call you all this shit. Let people be with who they want to be with. You feel right. me? And I've always been that person. So when I was dating a boyfriend, I wasn't hiding it. Like, I had a boyfriend. He even came to Detroit and stayed some days with us and everything like that at one point in time. So, um, But I didn't like the sexual part. I was like, damn, that's the only thing that I just really can't get jiggy with. Because I think men are attractive. Um, but I just can't get, I can't get jiggy with that. You can't get jiggy with I that I can't shit. get jiggy with that. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, and, but like I said, I still was like, man, well, damn. Okay, maybe it was just a bad the first time. I've heard stories about the first time. Let me try the second time. Second time, I was just like, no, I really just wanted to call the police afterwards. Even though, like, I don't know what just happened, but just send the send the officer. Like, I don't know. Like, it just didn't feel right. Just send the officer. He was <laughs> And then, so then I was like, I remember after the second time, I was like, man, yes, this really ain't what I want to do. You know what I mean? And I was still dating, you know, boys. I didn't have sex with every boyfriend I had. Um, But I remember the third time, I think that's when I, like, had a boyfriend and he had came to Detroit with me and everything like that. And I was trying to really have a boyfriend. I remember, like, real talk, y'all, I used to be so uncomfortable. I didn't even know how, how to sit in the car with his ass. I used to feel so weird, like. Like, like you had to play right here, like girl trying to, bye. trying to be his woman, <laughs> trying to be his woman. Okay, I could not do it. I was trying so hard. I was like, okay. <laughs> I remember one boyfriend. He really treated me like a lady, y'all. Aww. It's unladylike. Cause Shout I out to him. He, he he would put his little arm, his little hand on my leg when we driving and stuff. I would feel so nervous. Like <sighs> then I start sweating under my armpits, <laughs> and I already got on a tight girly shirt. So then I got sweat spots. And I used to just try to sit, like, you know, I want to get in the car, like, shit, play that Tupac. I'm like, man, he, oh, I used to hate one being, being with him because I had to sit up, be a lady. I used to always just overthink, like, where do I place my hands? Like, I don't fucking know even where to put these motherfuckers. Like, how do I sit my legs? Like, what do I do with my feet? Like, I used to hate, I'm telling you, I hated that going out to dinner, like, look, I'm, I'm behind him. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. you back. probably opening the right, door for him, right. your ass. Listen, I'm like, I don't like this. I don't. I don't it doesn't feel natural. Yeah. So, so that's, is that. So now I ain't like it. No, all right. All right. Yeah, more of the story. I, ain't I, like underst- that shit. I understand. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I ain't like so, it. But, um, okay. Oh, at what point did you, I don't know if that's what you were getting at, but like, at what point did you feel, was it that third time or that you was just really fine? Like, okay, no, I know you already had suspected that that's not what you wanted and that was just your way of like confirming it, I guess, but. After that, would you were you just really like at that point like okay yes I'm not lesbian or gay or what's the proper term? Well, well, well that's a whole <laughs> enlighten me. There. That's a whole other topic <laughs> there with all these labels. Because I don't have. like calling you none of that shit. But right. I'm just trying. I'm to... sway. It is a lot of labels. I personally don't care for them because it's just too many. I'm sway. Period. I like what I like. Exactly. And it shouldn't matter so to my nobody. Label is sway. Period. Um, but um, I was saying. Oh. Yeah, what was you saying? I told you I didn't like it. <laughs> Why you keep asking me? No. But I, I really already felt like I was bisexual for sure. Right. i never forget the first time I was watching Ricky Lake, and it was this lady on there, and she was just so attracted to me. And I remember just feeling bad, like, oh, my God. Like, I want to be with her. Like, oh, my God. I was so no, young, too. Like, I wanted to be my girlfriend. Like, and I was no. like, ooh, I can't believe I was thinking like that. And that was, that was the first time I really was like, oh, hold on. Mm. 
I'm attracted to women. Mm. But, you know, I didn't actually come out. You know, didn't even I, know. Hold I was on. Gonna say, yeah. Let's talk about when you and I first had the conversation about Right. It. First of all, y'all, I thought Twin knew. I was like, Twin knows. She's known for months. She's just being a bomb-ass sister and not saying nothing about it. And I don't even know what happened. I think it's when I thought you had caught me kissing her. Uh-huh. And, and I, I feel like I, I did myself. catch the end. I felt like I just... Or something. I feel like I caught I the end, but you end up confirming it. Yeah, you made you definitely made. I made a story. crazy. Your whole story. life was a lie. I made up a crazy <laughs> story, y'all. I had said something like we was doing a prayer or something. It's something crazy. I, can't I was remember. like, but yeah, my but, but my dumb ass fell for it, huh? You did, and I was like, damn, twins so naive. <laughs> right. Like, damn, Tell everybody me. else out here catching me and calling me gay and shit. And I'm like, I'm not gay. <laughs> the twin fighting for me. And so I remember when I finally told her, she was like, No. I'm like, What? What the? F- what are you looking at? What are you? <laughs> What do you mean you don't you don't know and you really did not know and I was I know. so surprised like I know and like you said I think I was just naive and then just being I won't even say in denial because I don't want to say that it ever crossed me to den- I mean <laughs> I don't know like I just think I you know me me and your twin and I'm just right here I don't see what everybody see I ain't outside looking at all I see is my sister yes yeah, she might be a time boy yes yeah, she whatever but. And maybe I just didn't give a fuck either. Like, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it's a combination. I didn't care enough, you know. I mean, not to be like that because I did care to a degree wondering of how society would treat you. Honestly, that would be my only concern. But um, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I just yeah. wasn't paying attention enough. Like I said, just naive and just because you're my twin. And right there, I just wasn't really, you know, my it eyes went all the way I open. Believe it. Yeah, it's like I was squinting. Because when I look back in hindsight, it, you know, definitely was like, I mean, I definitely, had, there's definitely were signs. <laughs> definitely. Definitely were signs. signs. I just. And I think you just was like, look, if she say she not, she not. Period. That she part, that part too. That part too. Like you said, Because my twins tell me everything. Right. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> you was a little uh, delayed on that one. But I was. I, I know was. it wasn't easy. I can't even remember. Yeah, I know I told you. And you were so just, you never made me feel any, you was even more amped up, like, okay, well. I Where the hell is that? Say so no. now. I did, I no. did, right. No. That part too, right. No, you know, you I was. really always just never, never, ever had you made me feel, did you make me feel like bad about it or just anything? You always yeah. just accepted it's me from never the very beginning. Me. And that is just so big to me for real because I know so many people to this day that their parents disclaim them, like, mm-hmm. or disown them, I mean. They, their family members don't talk to them, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And so for you to just always give me that just that feeling of, like, look, twin, be who you want to be. I support yeah. you no matter who you are. Sometimes we just need, like, that one person to just help us get through it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you just always made me feel not bad about it. Right. You, know, so you was pumping me up, but you definitely, you know, you, you was like, okay, sure. Right. It is what it is. No, I definitely, I mean? so, it, never, it never bothered me. You know, the only thing I do remember is that at one point I remember people called us gay just for be- playing basketball you know what i'm saying like i've to this day people swear I, i've done shit j- literally just because i play basketball like i know pe- i mean it's just crazy but um so i know sometimes people would ask me you know and i, I never knew if it was because of basketball because you i never knew but for i remember at one slight slight moment i used to think like dang i hope everybody don't think i am because she is and i remember it bothering me for a slight second and so i just remember waking up one day like why do you give a fuck first of all they going to say that just because you play basketball. People going to talk regardless. And I was just like, I love my sister so much that I don't even care if the whole world think I am knowing I ain't. If it means riding for my sister and it means make her happy, I just really didn't give a fuck, which I should have never had in the first place. I was just young and, right. you know. But, um, and again, that was a very short time. Like, that didn't last long at all before I woke up like, man, fuck that. I'm not about to be worried about what nobody think of me. And I stand to that to this day. People could think what they want. Um so, I, you know, it's never bothered me. And I always just wanted to make sure I was supported because I already felt like he was already dealing with who knows how anybody else is going to feel. So, like, right. last thing I wanted was for you to feel like I felt any type of way, especially when I really didn't. Like, Thank you, twin. Thank you so much. <laughs> By the way, she's not. She's not gay. So all my Strictly. little friends and supporters can stay <laughs> out of her DM and off of her page. Yes, okay? I never. I have but never been But twin has always been supportive of you, even, even in Atlanta. Um, when I started doing events and stuff, you always worked the door for me. You worked mm-hmm. the gay events for me. My yeah. mother works it. Come to them all exactly. up in that thing. I don't care exactly. what nobody thinks. I love that about you yes. so, so, so much. So, yes. so much. I remember Thank somebody you. saying that one day. That's why they thought, were well, you be at all the gay stuff? Really? First of all, I'm not worried about no simple-minded thought because you see I met some gay stuff that, that I'm gay. Furthermore, <laughs> I just don't even give a damn. Yep, I show them right up in that mug VIP. Exactly. <laughs> like, straight people can't hang with gay people. Like, fuck all that labels anyway. Right. We're just out hanging. You right. know what I mean? So, I hate that it's even so segregated, even down to, like, 
the lesbians and gay men, they even they don't even like to party together. It's crazy right. to me. Right. Um, I wish that we could all just not care what nobody does at night or real. who we, what, what, what we do with who we lay with, you know. If it's, I just feel like if nothing is hurting you directly, what is the problem? Like exactly. even to some of the families that don't accept their loved ones, I'm just like, you know, some of them I get, I, I guess they get all, um, not politi- right? religious. I was gonna say political, <laughs> religious with it. Um, but even then, it's just like everybody again. Like I said last night, everybody feels how they feel for a reason. Everybody, you just can't get in somebody's brain. You know, so if some people think they got the answers to why people are gay, how they become gay, and oh, they're really not. You don't fucking know unless you really experienced it first of all. So we can all on the outside sit here and try to judge and act like we got the answers that we can understand. And the reality is, we can't like you know and just learning to just accept people for who they are especially if it doesn't bring you any harm like it brings me no harm with how some you know how what somebody else does exactly. you know exactly. at night or you know so it's that, exactly. I know that's a whole nother discussion as far as if you're born that way that is, <laughs> you know? that is. but you know yeah. what why are we right here we can talk about that real quick mm-hmm. while I just give my personal opinion yeah. on it. Dude, I let's personally do that. believe that some people, I don't even, I don't know, I guess maybe most people, but definitely at least some people are boring gay, for real. Because, like, I was not around any gay people. Like, I did not know a gay person, you feel me? And I still was attracted to women early, like, at a young age. I just naturally, like, I don't have an explanation for it or nothing. I was just like, I like that. I don't really like that, but I like that, you know what I mean? Like, and again, I had no influence around me, none of that, you feel me? So... I do believe that some people are born like that, and you yeah. just can't help it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I do believe. I know, like, Dwayne Wade's daughter. So, oh, my, my bad. Let me, let me respect oh. her. Oh, you, oh yeah. Look. Yeah, cause I don't got time. Her when somebody I don't got time. I see because no. you <laughs> You say, what? What? Cut the camera. No. Oh, that's a whole nother Make camera. Make viral real quick. <laughs> <laughs> No, but um, you know, people were questioning like if they encouraged it too young, and it's like, damn, you know, I don't, I don't know the que- the answer to that, but I do believe that some people are born that way, yeah, and they might really feel like that at a young age. You I believe I mean? that too. I feel like I start to I, I, even just thinking about some of the kids that really like, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I think it varies. Like you said, there are some parents who maybe aren't don't know how to handle it, and maybe encourage it, and maybe don't give their kids a fair chance to experience both sides to really know that for sure that's what they want to do. But I do feel like some people are born that way. Just looking at just videos and documentaries and stuff where kids are young, like mm-hmm. boys who really just want to be a girl from the day they were born and feel like a girl. And mm-hmm. you know, some people have it. A lot think a lot. And this is coming from somebody who, again, I don't really know. I, I'm not in my sister's shoes. It's just me giving my opinion, whether it matters or not. But um, I think some people really are. I think some people just want to experiment. So they might experiment and realize that they're not. Some people yeah, are unsure. Definitely. And, you know, some people may be encouraged a little bit and maybe encouraged isn't the word. But just um, unfortunately, you know, it's a little more thrown out there now, which I don't even know if I want to say unfortunately, but it is just a lot more thrown out there now. I feel like mainly with the. Well, no, let me not say that. But um, so it might make it might just <laughs> they're ready to kill me. <laughs> It might just, <laughs> um, see yeah. now, see now, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, dang. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. But just that, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to jump back in. Um, you know, so, um, but no, you know, I just think some people are, and like I said, I just think with the kids, like you said, it is a touchy subject. You yeah. never know. I, I do think that parents just need to make sure they give their chan- their kids a fair chance to experience it because when kids are young, they may think they want something that they don't really know. Um, so, being cautious of that, but especially being older, once you know, you know, I think you know it is what it is, and yeah, it, it's a know. it's a touchy subject. It, it absolutely sure. is because there are people I think, like you said, that's just freaks, right? You're right. That <laughs> you part, I mean? no, just, seriously, they just want to try shit, um, right? So you know, yep. I don't know. I think so, it's situational, um, depending on like the situation, depending right. on the, the child, the parents, all of that. But I definitely right. think we should allow our kids to just at least. Explore themselves, explore both sides, you know, because it can be a kid that's young that, that thinks that they may be influenced or be around a bunch of gay people and then they may think that they're gay, but they're really not. So let them, right. you know, let, let her go date a boy. And, you know, that's why I said I'm glad I got to just fit, to experience both of them to really know that this is who I am and this is mm-hmm. where I want to be. And I definitely don't want a, um, a boyfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't think you... Um, shared like I know you talked about when I found out but I can't remember how you told mom or how mom found out little nosy ass <laughs> so I left my backpack 
This is how my mom found out, y'all. Shout out to moms, man. Y'all gonna meet moms one day. We definitely gotta bring her on. Yes. Um, but uh, I had left my backpack in high school. I want to say this was maybe like sophomore year. Um, and I asked her to bring my backpack up to the school. Mm. All she had to do was grab the backpack and bring <laughs> it up. It was just that simple. Uh-huh. Grab it. Nobody said open it. Nobody said unzip it. <laughs> um, but I had a, let- a letter in there from another, actually like my first girlfriend, I guess. It's strange because my first girlfriend was like, a stud, like my first, really? like, yeah. <laughs> um, it was weird. That's all I saw. You know, you didn't really see feminine girls. So when as soon as I saw a feminine girl, I, I get to that story. But anyway, it was a, another basketball um, teammate. <laughs> Look, I know some people in high school be like, I knew it. Right. I knew right. it. Uh-huh. They're going to be trying to guess who it right. was. Right. They um, don't know. Um, but yeah, my right. first experience was with like a town boy. Um, and uh, she like wrote a me a soft town boy kind of like. Yeah, like, she went too right, hard. Right, one like no. She went too hard. Um, <laughs> right. I'm trying to think what, what she would wear when we had to dress up. Right. Was it like a... Anyway, Just, I don't want to get all that. Right, okay. She, right, start describing. Uh, shout out to you. Right. <laughs> right, we super cool now and, you know. But anyway... Um, yeah, it was a letter in there basically just detailing some things that we had done and basically just airing us out. And um, my mm. mom knows ass. No. <laughs> Being a mom. You know, I guess sometimes you got to dig in your, your kids' shit and just Man. see what they up to. But mm-hmm. she read the letter. And this is how I, I knew. I remember thinking, damn, I hope she don't open that backpack. And I remember seeing her down the hallway when she first walked in, Everett, and I was down the hallway. And you know, mom faced me. Yep, so wrong. She can't hide I'm it. I'm talking about. Can't hide it. Storming down the hallway like. I'm all like. Hi, mom. So hey, you mom. Like, and I don't even think she told me until we got home because she tried to act like she was sparing my feelings. I'm like, well, nigga, you already gave me the, the, the evil look. The death stare. Something, something wrong. <laughs> and we got home and. Um, she tapped that ass. No, I'm just no, playing. I know. I, really can't, I feel like we she talked about it. She tried to talk it. to you, I think. Yeah. And then what happened was it was another situation where we had another basketball player. That's all we had was our teammates. No, no. <laughs> Shit, we had to date a teammate. Um, and she remember she came over. She was a feminine girl. She came over to stay the night, and my mom caught us kissing. Remember? I'm trying to remember the girl. That's not like a whole whore just getting caught kissing. Uh, um. <laughs> And my mom caught us kissing, and mm. I'll never forget. She walked out, and she had that big bottle here to see, like the gallon bottle. And she got. She grabbed drunk. that bottle and left. You hear me? She was gone for a couple hours, and she came back, and um, you know, she had to talk with me. She was like, you know, I ain't really super in favor of it, um, mm-hmm. but you know, if it's who you want to be, then you know, I'm gonna love you for who you are, and blah blah blah. And um, at, man, ever since then, like, my mom has no problems with it. First of all, my mom is so just open and super supportive, and loves everybody. And I'm so thankful to have my mother as well that never made me feel any kind of way. Yeah, she was a little yeah. upset in the beginning. And I think it was more of, you know, like you said, just worried about me and how I'm going to be treated and how I have to maneuver through life um, mm-hmm. being a lesbian. But um, she's never talked down on it, never made me feel bad. Super supportive to this day. She also, like I said, worked the events with my twin. Um, yeah. And I'm just so thankful for that. You know what I mean? I'm so thankful mm-hmm. for that. She definitely um, was supportive. I know yep. I know it was different for her at first, just trying to adjust, mainly when you would bring your girls. Look, oh, yes, you You did sound like a little home on this, on this little podcast. <laughs> when you would bring your women around. I'm just like. <laughs> I'm the man. I, I'm the man. Because <laughs> no. No, you actually. I was exploring. <laughs> trying to figure the shit out. <laughs> Shit. But um, I think that's when she would be a little just, especially if y'all interacted, it, it was just, right. used to her. She would just. um. I know sometimes she would just be like, like she just getting used to seeing yes, you in action. It really, it, right. it really threw her off for a minute. Even though now she, like you said, don't give a rat's ass. But I think it was just different for her, and that, that might it be was. for any parent to adjust to just seeing your your child in that state. And then you know, I'm sure it just to, does take some time yeah. to just get used to and yeah. not bother. That's why you. I had to break so many damn barriers and show everybody in my family that it does not matter who or what I'm doing at night. As long as I'm a good person, I take care of myself. Exactly, I'm a positive person. But it's funny, you're so right. Shit, we was practicing social distancing back then. I remember when I had my girlfriend around, listen, she was over here, I was over Hello. there. We are not touching. Right. Don't hug that. in front of my mama exactly. or nothing. Like, I you're do. right. And um, it definitely probably just made her a little uncomfortable. And then we yeah. had our little sisters and brothers around. So maybe she just, you know. But right. um, like I said, I'm just so blessed, you know. Right. We just, you know, we went through that little phase and that was it. That was minor so compared what? to what other people go through. Right. 
So what? Well, well, thank you for ha- for coming on the show and talking. Absolutely. Um, anytime you, anytime. Just let me know. Tell <laughs> no, the manager, but, I can come back do a part. Two. I really do it feel like nothing, I'm interviewing it you. It ain't nothing to it. <laughs> so you tell know? the people. Yeah. What um what advice would you have for? <laughs> asshole. Go ahead. I like this little show you got. <laughs> what advice would you have for up and coming no, I'm like, lesbians? <laughs> yeah. Up and coming. <laughs> no, but seriously, for people that feel like they that is, you know, what they identify as, how to handle it just with themselves, with their family, like what advice? I still get people to ask me that that's even my age. Um sometimes like I had just had a consultation a couple weeks ago and it was somebody actually I think maybe a couple years older than me, still talking about how they're trying to be accepted by their family, right? So I would just say this. I remember this is the mindset I had. I was like, you know what? If I just be on my shit and nobody can tell me nothing, then nobody can tell me nothing. Mm. Like dead ass. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get my own crib, my own car, get a job, take care of myself. I'm going to be super successful. I'm going to just be so awesome to the point where it's not even going to matter. And I remember just having that mindset. Like, they're going to have to. What can you say about me? What can you say to me, really? Right. Like, really? That's all you can say is, oh, you, you're a lesbian? You can't say nothing else. I take care of myself. I take care of my family. I, I give to the community. Like, I'm an awesome person. So what can you really say? You feel me? You can't say I'm on drugs. You can't say I'm out here robbing and stealing. And that was the mindset I had. So I would just encourage people to just be you. Go even harder at who you are. You know what I mean? Like, just be yeah. yourself. Don't waste no time trying to please people. Because yes. like I said, I know people that are my age or older who are still trying to be accepted from their parents. So imagine that. Imagine right. being... 30, 40 years old and you still trying to be accepted, life too short. Right. Life too short. And and it sucks to the parents that don't accept their kids and the relatives that don't accept their, their family members. You know what I mean? I understand, you know, okay, I guess maybe if you had a family outing, I don't even know if I want to say this, but I guess, you know, maybe don't be super overly affectionate, but I feel like even with, with straight couples, that should be the case because I don't want to sit here and say there's rules right for gays when you're out but i mean i guess like if your family try to compromise is, and meet yeah, them some way well, you know you're saying like say. a, at least that's what yeah. maybe the parents can do instead of just totally shutting your kids out maybe just try to talk with them and compromise and say okay do what you do maybe just don't bring it around me you know or maybe just but even then nah. no right don't bring it right yeah. i get what you but, mean. we're but, trying to figure it right, out right right i think we're gonna run into a dead end okay well i was that, saying okay i think the point is just the parents y'all need to just accept that part kids. the fuck i think that's what it really is that's what it really Cause is because all that restrictions and shit don't break right. you can come at thanksgiving but they can't come right i was about to up, say right, right. That's I'm, so, I'm trying to find a medium but it's just tough but maybe like you said just maybe not maybe not right maybe not just not extra flamboyant and all that extra which like you said maybe should apply to just relationships and period re- period in certain situations right. not just you know um but um darn yeah, i would just i would just encourage you people i would <laughs> you people i would encourage you people no but just to really like i said go harder at being your fucking self and put all your energy and your focus into yourself mm-hmm. they're gonna have to accept you and guess what if they don't it really is their problem mm-hmm. some people have inner you know inner issues problems with it with their self mm-hmm. and that's why they treat you the way or they don't accept you mm-hmm. you know for who you are and it's nothing you could do about that you have right. to understand that and just know that it sucks but it's just the reality of it mm-hmm. and you're not going to waste your time stressing about them right. something that you can't change you feel me so just be you be strong through it find people around you that do right. support you to try to just you know, not so that they can alone. replace your parents and stuff, but they'll help you just kind of get through it, you know? Right. And you're not alone. Know that. Right. It's, it's a lot of people in your situation. Right. Um, you know, that's all I would say. Is for the non-supportive, let's just, right, be true to yourself. You only get one life, and it's not to live for the next person. And just for the people who aren't so supportive, let's just try to be just, just more understanding or and you know I, I hesitate saying that words because sometimes it's a matter of not even understanding but just maybe respecting it because sometimes exactly. we don't fully understand why somebody exactly. is how there is or doing what they're doing so I don't know that understanding is the word but let's try to understand that again everybody is how they are and feels how they feel for a reason nobody chooses to wake up and say I want to be gay and deal with all the bullshit that comes with society right. and, and choose to live like that I'm sure 95% of the people would much rather l- live the way y'all want them to live just for a more peaceful life no Facts. And that's that's not ideal. You, that sound good? Great. Thank you, both. Put that on the shirt. Okay. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> but for real, no, but you know, we only get one truth, life. Because I remember, um, I remember just feeling that way. Like, I remember feeling like. <laughs> <laughs> Let it out, Paul. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? 
good point. Saying no, I have such a good the point. The non-supportive people, let's be more, even if we don't Oh, no, understand. no, about you, like, saying people, which, like, if people could choose, I remember oh, I would say that, like, God damn it, right. like, I'm actually trying to choose to be straight. Right. You feel me? Like, just I'm for y'all motherfuckers. Just for y'all. Like, right. God damn it, if I had a choice, I would definitely choose to be straight. Because, like you said, who wants to go through this bullshit? Like, right. Like, who wants to go through this? Right. I don't want to grow up and be told no just because of who I like and shit like that. Right. And I remember saying that to people all the time. Like, damn it, if I could choose a shit, I would choose it. Right. Just to get through life easier. But I can't. It's who right. I am. Right. So like you said, just being understanding and re- being respectful, like you said. Just right. respecting it. That's all. That's right. all. Yeah. That's all, y'all. And Make nowadays, I will place. say, it's, it's definitely more accepted. Mm-hmm. Um, in today's world, definitely still have issues. Definitely still, you know, um, crimes and stuff committed against gay people mm-hmm. and transgender people and stuff like that. Um, but it's definitely more accepted, so I'm, I'm definitely pleased with the progress, and I know mm-hmm. that we're going to continue to just open up people's minds and things like that. Right. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. just different, you know, and, and especially here in Atlanta because there's so many different um, different ways you can look at it, I guess, you know, just as far as just everybody's opinions and all that because, you know, mm-hmm. some people may feel like they're not – they don't have a problem with it, but they just hate when people are extra, just flamboyant and extra with it. And, it's, you know, it's just a lot of different ways people look at it. But I just think that overall, if we all just, you know, don't worry. If it's not hurting you, like, well, who really gives a fuck? Regardless of what you see out in public, if it's not hurting you, if you don't feel like it's disrespectful to you or your kids, which, again, that could be with a man or woman. It's not just about um, gay um, interaction, but... Let's just all just try to love each other more. You know, we all only get one life to live, and let's just make the best of it. Let's just respect each other and right. um, just love on each it. other. Exactly. And Especially. talk to your kids early on about it, you know, so right. they're not bullying people. And just so they understand. You know, right. talk to them about it before they even see it. See it. Right. You know what I mean? And, right. Um, yeah, because it's definitely, like, we're going to have to do a part two on this because I know I got more to say and some more stories to share. Because okay. um, even myself, let's me being a lesbian, there are some things that, you know, we could do a little differently. Like, you know, the people that are kind of just um, straddling the fence on both sides. Like, you're a, you're a man one day, then a girl the next day. Right. You know what I mean? That could That's be what like, I meant, you know, just, for lack of a better word, by in Atlanta, it's a little different. And, you know, look, I'm trying to, I got to watch what I say. Right. Too, not to listen, they'll come from right. me too now. But, you know, I definitely want people to be who they are. But I right. guess it's just a matter of finding out who you are and being confident and staying true to that. And not flopping back and forth. Right. You know what I mean? And like, understanding us too. Like, in, the, in those cases, like, some of the... Men, I'm just using an example, who may wear lashes and, you know, be flamboyant and want to be identified as a woman and even want to use the women's restroom. Like, understand in that aspect, like, it is a little different. Like, you know, especially if you're a whole man, you haven't had surgery. Don't look at it like because I I personally wouldn't feel comfortable with that man coming in the women's bathroom. And I don't have nothing against gays, lesbians, nothing like that. So that's not a matter of that. That's just a matter of this is just a little absurd. Like, I mean, if you still look like a whole man just because you're throwing some lashes and you, you feel you should walk into the women's bathroom, right. that's a little absurd, you know. But I feel like if you totally transition and everything about you appears to be a woman, then that's different. And, again, that's just an opinion on that. That doesn't mean that you're, you're against or I'm rather against any gays or anything like that. I just think that, you know, that's what I was trying to say earlier without saying it was, you know, in some instances I can understand some people's opinions on some of it as far as how it's handled or right. how they go about it. No, um, so I, I wish, I agree too. right. And so I wish some of the, the gays or lesbians would understand that sometimes when people do have their opinions on those things, like understand where we're coming from. I mean, you know, we are in a women's restroom wanting to see women. So you're a whole man wanting to walk in here. Just understand a little bit of that. Yeah. But, don't be so defensive. Don't be so always defensive ready to all fight. the time. Everybody right. just need to be understanding of each other, and we should be able to say what we want to say without it, you know, leading to an argument. You know what I mean? And it, you can say what you want, it's just how you say it. And again, it just goes back to respect. Right. You know what I mean? So we should be able to voice our opinions without it turning into a confrontation. Right. You know? We so, definitely um, gonna have a part two of yeah, this. Yeah, we definitely gonna have a part two, y'all. Yeah. Uh, on, on episode six, gonna be part two of this. Yes. Um, Stay tuned. Um, but we are gonna go ahead and wrap up with the quote: "To shine your brightest light is to be who you truly are." And that just goes to everything we just said, exactly. regardless of what anybody thinks, regardless of anybody feels you should be, be who you truly are. And that is really your brightest light. Exactly. That's so the brightest you it. can be. Yeah. The best you can be. You want to yes. be the best you can be. You you want to you want to accomplish all your goals. You want to be the brightest star, the brightest person, like be who you truly yes. are, not who the next person wants you to be, not who your parents want you right. to be, not what you see on social media, but be true to yourself. That is the number one way yeah. to succeed, y'all. I'm trying to tell you, it's going to carry over in everything that you do. Right. You being true to yourself, mm. it ain't no stopping you. It's no stopping you. You yeah. feel me? So Make sure to be a good you, you know what I'm saying? You really can't just be the best you. Like I said, a good person, just and you just really can't lose 
um, when you do that and own who you really are. So stay true to yourself and yes. shine bright. Yes. Shine bright. That's the only way you can shine bright. Yes, yes, yes. For sure, for sure. So it was a nice, interesting conversation. Y'all make sure y'all yeah. stay tuned for part two. Make sure y'all follow us. Make sure y'all subscribe on YouTube, Tapping with the Twins, Facebook, um, Instagram. We actually our individual pages as well. So mine's is Queen Reese with two underscores. And then we got Sway Swiss. Sway underscore Swiss. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Sway underscore Make sure y'all check us out, subscribe, tune in, and definitely stay tuned for episode six as we talk more about Sway's life. I'm so any questions for part two that y'all see from here, anything y'all want to know, drop it in the comment yep. section or sure. shoot us the email. We'll, we'll make sure that we answer in episode six. Tap in with the twins, y'all. We tapping yes. out. It's time to tap out. Thank y'all. See you next week. Peace.